Hey folks, coming to you again from Depra's Tech Center in the Midwest. We've got a couple of application examples for you today. One is roughing and the other is finishing. The roughing approach is going to be high feed ramping, but using a button cutter instead of a high feed cutter. We'll show you how that compares in terms of productivity and also maybe some practical reasons you might want to consider a button tool over a high feed. Once we've roughed the part, then we'll finish using three different approaches. You can see we've got a pretty steep taper core shape here. Uh, and we're going to finish this first with a bullnose cutter, just like this one, using the typical waterline profile milling approach. After that, we'll put a ball nose tool in, same diameter, same speeds and feeds, and the same tool path so that you can compare cycle times with that. Finally, we'll use the same bull nose cutter that we started with, but instead of the waterline finishing approach, we'll use plunge finishing. We'll compare cycle times, finishes, and talk about some different pros and cons uh, between the bull nose and the ball nose style tool. And in fact, this even applies towards the barrel type cutters that are trending right now as well. So let's go. So our roughing is complete. We have a total depth of about three and a quarter inches top to bottom for our core. Uh, there's a fair amount of slope on this shape as you can see. Uh, our button cutter, double sided button cutter, took eight minutes and 47 seconds to complete the roughing routine. Uh, keep in mind with a button tool versus high feed, uh, the scallops that are left on the sloped surfaces are actually smaller uh, with a button cutter. So you do get a little bit of a smoother surface to work with for your semi-finishing and your finishing work after the roughing is done. We ran this at about 230 inches per minute and got that cycle time of a little over eight and a half minutes. Had we used high feed, we probably would have been upwards of 300 inches a minute and probably finish this in maybe six or seven minutes. However, we would have had a little bit more scalloping on the sides. Uh, additionally, a high feed cutter might have given you four usable edges or six usable edges, depending on what you're using. This button cutter with double sides actually provides 12 usable indexes per insert. So economically speaking, you could make a very strong argument for using this type of tool for your high feed ramping versus an actual high feed cutter. So now that we've got the part roughed out, we'll move on to the finishing operation with the bullnose cutter.
So four hours and 10 minutes later, we have our core walls and corners finished. The finish is beautiful. Uh, again, this was with a three quarter inch bull nose end mill, uh, two fluted. We ran 900 surface feet and 10,000 feet per tooth. So our feed rate was around 90 inches a minute as we went around the profile. We did program a one tenth scallop height. So this surface finish will require very little to no polishing time uh, once it comes off the machine. So in that regard, it's very good. You might say, well, so what if it was four hours? I'll just run it overnight. And that's true. However, the longer that tool runs on the part, the more chance there is of a little bit of edge breakdown on our insert. So there's some risk involved in possibly losing size the longer we're in that type of a cut. So nice finish, uh, good outcome in terms of appearance, but four hour cycle time is longer than I think most shops would wanna see for a core of this size, which is about six and a quarter inches long by four and a quarter inches wide uh, at the base, and it's about three and a quarter inches tall. So let's try a ball nose cutter next and see how that compares in terms of surface finish and cycle time. Okay, so using a three quarter inch ball nose, uh, our cycle time is, is reduced dramatically to 43 minutes and 30 seconds. So uh, the, the larger radius on our ball nose cutter allowed us a larger step down between passes, still gives us a, an extremely good finish, uh, possibly even a little bit better uh, than the profiling cuts did with the bull nose tool and the smaller radius on that one. So. Big improvement in cycle time, nice finish. Uh, the trade-off here is we're going to lose our ability uh, with that large radius on the ball nose, we can't get down tight into a corner. So if the, uh, if the workpiece calls for a smaller radius in the corner, then you're forced to follow up the ball nose with some type of smaller diameter or smaller corner radius uh, finishing tool to take in and blend that corner uh, to the sloped walls. So next thing we'll take a look at is the the bullnose cutter, uh, same one as before, but in a plunge finishing approach versus the profile finishing.
So 48 minutes later, the bullnose cutter has finished our core surfaces using the plunge finishing approach. Uh, that's about eh, four minutes slower actually than the ball nose cutter was, but about four times faster than this same style tool was in using a profile milling approach. So the plunge finishing approach literally cut the cycle time by 75%. Um, two distinct advantages that this cutter has over the ball nose uh, that was a few minutes faster. Uh, number one, using this small corner radius on a bullnose cutter allows us to get down into uh, tight corners, intersections between a floor and a surface wall. Uh, it, it definitely lets us uh, have more access to corners than what the ball nose tool would. Obviously the ball nose cutter uh, would require some type of secondary tool to get in and finish that corner intersection. Um, the second advantage is in regards to size and tool pressure. A ball nose cutter, or for that matter, uh, the new barrel type cutters, uh, both of those type tools have a larger radius, uh, and that means more contact, more surface area in contact with the workpiece. And more surface area in contact means more tool pressure and deflection, and the potential for having to actually recut a part uh, due to the fact that it comes in oversized after the first finished pass. Using a bull nose or backdraft style tool like this, the only tool pressure we have is just on the, the slight corner radius and small wiper area uh, that does the bulk of the work. The insert then back tapers away, uh, creating a very small amount of tool pressure uh, when you're cutting like this, and that generally means that we take the part to size in one pass rather than having to recut. Uh, so two pretty distinct advantages using this style cutter for finishing tapered walls uh, over a ball nose or over a barrel type cutter. So that wraps it up. On the roughing side, we showed you how to do high feed profile ramping, but using a button cutter instead of high feed. Some pretty good uh, arguments for using the button cutter. Uh, strong, robust cutting edge. It can take a good depth of cut. You've got uh, likely more usable cutting edges versus high feed, and you get smaller scallops on that surface uh, due to the round cutting edge versus the high feed cutting edge. So that means your semi-finishing tool has a little bit more even stock removal in store for it. So good arguments can be made for a button cutter versus high feed. On your ramping, you gotta decide which works better for your application. On the finishing side, we showed you a typical waterline profile finishing using both a bull nose and a ball nose cutter. Obviously, the ball nose cutter has a huge advantage in terms of cycle time, uh, but tool pressure is increased. Now, whether that's a ball nose or a barrel type cutter, definitely much more tool pressure than using a bull nose style tool. When we went to the bull nose plunge finishing style, cycle time was very comparable to the ball nose and we're generating a lot less tool pressure uh, versus a ball nose or a barrel type cutter. And we can get into these tighter corners that we can't get into with the ball nose. So good, good advantages there in the plunge finishing, but using a bull nose low pressure tool. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you'd like any more information about this or other applications from DAPRA, call us at 800-243-3344 or email us at info at Thanks for watching.